Welcome to Demo Day, where young innovators take the stage and showcase real-world projects to a global audience. At Weequal School, students learn to become innovators, teaching each other each week through their creations. Weequal App has thousands of novel and useful projects born out of our students' strengths, interests, and passions. But Demo Day is more than just a presentation. It's a celebration of innovation, collaboration, and the power of young minds. Join us on this incredible journey of inspiration as we witness the the next generation of problem solvers and leaders. From Harvard professors to industry experts, our demo days attract incredible guest speakers who share their knowledge and ignite curiosity. Whether you're a young innovator looking to showcase your creations or a family seeking an extraordinary learning experience, Demo Day is here for you. Together, let's create a world where young minds flourish, ideas come to life, and innovation knows no boundaries. Join us for an unforgettable journey of learning, growth, and discovery. Welcome to Demo Day. Let's get started. Um, thank you all for joining. I, uh, we have a lot of great projects that we're presenting this Demo Day. Um, as you all might already know, this week's theme is ChatGPT in education. And, um, and so, yeah, I'll just get started with my presentation. Okay, so this is my article on data-driven decision-making, the top analytics tools for mobile and web applications. Um, at today's demo day, I'm not really talking specifically about this article, but how I use ChatGPT to create this article and help me with my research. Um, so over here, I just have a presentation. So first off, what is ChatGPT? Um, so ChatGPT is a large language model created by OpenAI um, that basically is trained on an immense amount of data to try to um, predict the next word that you might wanna see based off of prompts that you give it. And so it's structured in a chat box kind of format, hence the chat and ChatGPT, where you can ask it questions um, and it will respond to you. Uh, so, Basically, this has had a lot of implications in education, given that um, it can be used to like write articles for you. And some schools are kind of hesitant to allow students to use ChatGPT, given that it can be used to just generate articles and do your homework for you. But um, Weequal School is probably one of the only schools that we're having a demo day on how our students are using ChatGPT. Um, and so the Ch GPT-4, the latest version of ChatGPT is trained on 100 trillion training parameters. And in the first two months of releasing, ChatGPT got over 100 million users. And there is estimated to be a 22% growth in demand for data scientists by 2023, which is why we view it's incredibly important for our students to know how to use ChatGPT and all of these machine learning tools. So given that, how can you use ChatGPT for research? Um, so I'm gonna be going through how I use this specifically for my article. So I was curious about what are the best data analytics platforms to use for our application, Weequal App, to have, make better, more informed decisions on how we can improve our application and how users are responding to our iterations based off of the actual data. And so my prompt was, what are the best analytics tools for getting user data on mobile and web applications? And so ChatGPT, generated a few suggestions, including Google Analytics, Mixpanel, Amplitude, Firebase Analytics, and Heap Analytics. After that, I also asked, how should I decide which platform to choose? So it suggested five different metrics to consider, and I only chose three out of the five, including features, ease of use, and cost. I excluded data accuracy and scalability because I was only looking at the best analytics platforms and generally they had those things. So if they weren't, if they didn't have accurate data or it didn't scale, then I wasn't really including that in my research. 
So I didn't find it relevant for my article. So that is something that is important is not just necessarily like taking ChatGPT and copy and pasting it into whatever you're doing, but actually thinking for yourself, using it's whatever it generates and actually kind of thinking about how it can be helpful to you. Um, the next prompt is analyze each of the best analytics tools you mentioned above with these factors. And so this is something that is really, really cool is that you can ask like what, what platforms, what factors to consider, and then you can just say, okay, now use those factors to analyze each platform. Um, so then it gave me the kind of given the factors that it mentioned, including features, data accuracy, ease of use, scalability, and cost, how do each of these platforms do in terms of all of those metrics that you can consider? And the last prompt I gave it is list the most common use cases for analytics in mobile and web, web platforms and group these platforms into each use case. So this made it really easy for me to weigh the strengths of each platform by seeing, um, by basically just seeing like, well, what are the different ways might people be using these platforms? And then which are, what platforms are best for each of these use cases so that I can look for the use cases that I was looking for and then what platforms are best for that. So lastly, how can you apply ChatGPT to your research? So there are a bunch of different ways that you can apply ChatGPT to your research. One, some really useful ways is kind of learning more about the, basically like the consensus of people in that field already. What do people have already established as true or kind of the best standing information? So you can educate yourself really quickly about those things. If I worked, I could have read like 15 of the top articles, on the best analytics platforms, but ChatGPT was able to kind of give me the general consensus around that topic very fast. And then another thing that you can ask, that you can use ChatGPT for is actually knowing like what questions to ask. What should I be um, kind of trying to learn about in order to better educate myself on the subject? Because that is one big thing is knowing what you don't know, which is something sometimes is not possible. Sometimes you kind of need either an expert or something like ChatGPT to tell you like what area should I be on the lookout for given that I don't know that much about this area. Um, and so there are a ton of different ways that you can use ChatGPT to kind of get a general understanding of something. And that's kind of the main use case of it is just that because it has so much data it can really give you kind of the, the an overview on all these different subjects. And, um, and then kind of the, the place that you can come in is exploring the unexplored areas and kind of pushing the boundaries and also giving specific use cases and how, how to make it applicable to humans and kind of addressing certain questions that others in your situation might have. Um, and kind of just taking that human aspect of like, we have these incredibly powerful language models and, and machine learning tools, but how can we actually apply it in our lives to, to create value for others? Um, and, and so with that, um, I think I'm going to pass it on to Abhinav, who uh, has also created a project on ChatGPT. And um, yeah, thank you so much. He mentioned that he'd actually like to go third or fourth, so. Oh, okay, okay. So um, with that, Chloe, are you ready to present your project? Sure. Okay, awesome. Go right ahead. I made a short video on um, basically, what ChatGPT is and how I used it in when in this project. Hi, my name is Chloe, and today I'll be presenting my project on Thomas Jefferson interview with ChatGPT, he um the updated version. So, one of my hey dad's heroes was 
Thomas Jefferson, but I didn't know a lot about him. So I asked ChatGPT to pretend to be Thomas Jefferson. And I asked him um, a lot of questions. And since there was a lot, um, I'll only share two of my favorite questions. So the first one was, what was his most significant learning experience? So, so he went to France for a short time, and one of the and one of the reasons he liked it there was because he had exposure to another culture. But the main reason he really he liked that was because he learned a lot about diplomacy. And he brought back those lessons. He brought back those values. to the U.S. and he used them in the constitution and the declaration of independence so the second question is what was his philosophy on debate you can't see it here but it is in the interview additional questions section in the table of contents in this project so he believes that productive debate is made up of logic you want to be logical so no one can find any loopholes in your um, argument uh, you want, want to have a lot of evidence to back you up. You want to be civil if you're debating with a friend or family member. Um, you don't want to damage those relationships. You want to have an open mind. And you might want to be willing to change your views. That doesn't necessarily mean that you need to change your views. But if the evidence says you probably should change your views, then you might want to do that. So that's an example of how I use ChatGPT, but that's just one example, and I find it really useful on all, all aspects of my life. And because I find it so useful, I hope that, that you will use it and that you will find it also useful for your life too. Thank you for watching. Hey, is uh, while we're waiting for, oh, Chloe's back. Hey, Chloe, let me um, let me go ahead and give you a quick intro since you were out. Um, yeah, you can make a call. Um, so Chloe actually did this uh, maybe three weeks ago, four weeks ago or so. And um, you, in, in fact, you, you may have heard me talk to you on the phone about this project because I just, I thought that the whole approach to it was was so creative and, and so uniquely chat GBT. Like you can't use Google to do that although you can use Google for research, right? Um, but this is a particularly powerful um, strategy, uh, one of many for, for using ChatGPT for education. Um, and so um, when, when I was asking Chloe, like, well, what do you, what do you wanna do for this demo day? And this is the first one that she mentioned and we we're like, oh yeah, of course. So anyway, Chloe, we shared your video. Um, do you want to, uh, Maybe you could just pull up, you could pull up your project or actually see me, if you have it open, you could, you could pull that up too. Um, do you want to uh, just mention maybe um, just a little bit more about kind of how you structure this and some takeaways in your own words, and then we can go ahead and go on with the next presentation. That'd be great. Uh, so like I said in the video, I use this to uh, use ChatGPT to um, create this project. And I asked him a bunch of questions. I And um, they're listed in the table of contents from the way I, um, in the order I asked them. And, and so, how um I have the favorite my some of my favorite questions hints at the very top hub and there are some additional questions at the end and I asked a lot of them um and so yeah I I just thought it was really interesting that 
a, a robot could, you just need to ask a robot uh, to pretend to be someone who's been dead for hundreds of years and that you can actually ask legendary people questions as if if you were actually talking to them. So that is why I really like this project. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. I also, that, that concept was kind of mind blowing to me. And so I think that now the question is to, to a bunch of people like now, who do you want to ask those questions to? So um, I think if that's everything, then we can um, move on to Isla. Um, you can go ahead and share your presentation. Okay, yeah, so what my name is Isla and today I'm going to be talking about how I use ChatGPT to write this fictional story, um, but I'm going to be sharing a slide presentation instead. Okay, so... Um, yeah, so like I said, I'm going to be sharing how ChatGPT can help you with your creative writing. So first of all, my story, Violent Peace, is about a girl who lives in a world that was taken over by an alien species. And there are a lot of struggles that you can run into when you're writing your story such as coming up with names for certain things or places. Like I had a lot of trouble coming up with a name for my alien species that took over the world. Um, but ChatGPT can help a lot with doing things like that. So here I, I just asked ChatGPT to come up with eight names for a made up alien species and it'll just do it and you can and they're they're really good and you can just choose from that and it but it's not just alien species you can come you can tell it to you can also tell it to describe like a sunset for example and ask it to come up with different adjectives for it so that you don't have you don't use the same adjective over and over again which can get repetitive and stuff like that just to make your writing a lot more engaging and a lot less repetitive so you can also improve your writing um, using ChatGPT, not just by coming up with new words for adjectives or new names for different alien species or whatever. Um, you can also tell it to revise your writing in a certain tone. So this is one of the paragraphs here I, that I have in my article. And so I asked ChatGPT to make it more engaging and more engaging. And so it just revised my article to um, do exactly that, make it more engaging. And so if you wanna make your writing more uh, sad or you wanna make your writing sound more happy or something like that, ChatGPT can be really, really helpful if you haven't had a lot of practice with that. So thank you for listening to my presentation. ChatGPT can help you with um, enhancing your writing um, and in all sorts of different ways and not just in creative writing as well. You can also use it to enhance your writing with um, sound more interesting or really any kind of writing as well. And it can also help you in not just writing, but also learning and stuff like that. So thank you for listening to my presentation. Awesome, thank you so much, Isla. Um, 
So lastly, we have Abhinav um, presenting his project. Abhinav, are you ready? Yep. Okay, awesome. There you go. So, so hey everyone, uh, I'm a student at Vitru School. Just uh, uh, today is my, like, I created one project about, like, uh, the Indian issues with the uh, uh, caste issues. So I wrote of, uh, wrote about it like two versions. Like one is built in ChatGPT and one uh, is the one which I wrote by myself. So in both versions, we talk about the challenges faced by Mahar community, which is a community in India. So who have been one of the worst affected by the caste system. However, they found a leader in uh, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, who was from the Maha community, and dedicated, uh, uh, sorry, dedicated uh, his life to improving their lives and other oppressed caste. So basically, he, uh, he didn't like how we get treated by other caste people. So basically, uh, they can't be able to like touch the water etc if we touch the water they will be like beaten uh beaten up us so that's why so that's why uh dr br ambedkar like came forward to remove that issue in this version written by chat gpt we learned about dr uh, br ambedkar ambedkar's role in creating india's constitution which established untouchability and discrimination based on caste he also established organization like uh, Outcast States West, uh, Welfare Association to help up, uh, uplift the Mahar community and other marginalized list caste. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar uh, believed that education was the key of breaking the cycle of poverty and discrimination and worked hard to promote education among the Dalit community. In my version, we discussed how Dr. Ambedkar experienced firsthand that atrocities and discrimination faced by Mahar community. He founded that Bhaiskrit Hidgakarni Mit Sabha. It was like a community as well, known as uh, uh, Brashta community in India. They was like treating so badly to uh, our Mahar community. So all India scheduled a caste federation, which aimed to unite the Dalit community and advocate for their rights. In, ad in addition to their advocacy work, Dr. Ambedkar also made significant contribution to Indian, uh, constitu uh, Indian uh, JDP and played a crucial role in the drafting of the Indian constitution. Despite the challenge uh, faced by the Mahar community, Dr. Uh, Ambedkar legacy lives on and continues inspire mag uh, inspiring the people uh, of the uh, Mahar community. In India to strive for equal rights and social justice. It was really difficult for Mahar community in the old days, but Dr. Ambedkar's work and teaching have had a lasting impact on Indian society. Thank you for joining me throughout this project, and I hope you learned uh, learned something new about the Mahar community and Ambed, uh, Dr. Ambedkar's contribution to India society. So basically, I just give them a basic summary of the project, which I, uh, what I have talked about. I hope it's uh, got well, because it's late in India, so I feel a little bit sleepy. So that's why uh, I think, yeah. I got little to all. Yeah. Okay, so uh, round of applause to all the students presenting today. Um, take everybody yeah. yeah, let's. Yeah. Um, so everybody should now be able to unmute themselves and start their video. Ooh. Um, yeah, Abhinav uh, is joining us here from, from India. And I was talking to him 
um, about maybe two hours ago. And he said, Hey, Joe, I was like, what are you still doing up, man? It's, it's like, uh, it's midnight over there. He's like, I want to be on demo day. I was like, Oh, okay. Well, it's a chat GBT themed demo day. So, um, what are you going to do to, to get on the demo day? Like you have to have a chat GPT themed demo, you know, for this. And he's like, oh, okay, we're talking about it. He's like, well, I don't know. I can just revise my article using ChatGPT. That's easy. Popped it in there. And then it came up with another version. It's the same content. It was just with revisions. So we then include both of those. And it was like, all right, ChatGPT themed demo, right? Project. I don't think we're going to do another ChatGPT themed demo day because doing that now would be like having a Google themed demo day where it's like, here are projects where kids used Google and Google platforms like YouTube to help them learn something. And it's like, come on, like we're using it for all this stuff. <laughs> and so <laughs> this is it, this is the last one. We're not gonna do another chat GPT. They're all gonna be uh, themed uh, that way to some degree. So um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing thoughts from everybody. Maybe we could just real quick um, have introductions from those of you who were not presenting. Uh, I'm Joe Lou. Kids call me Mr. Weekwell. That kind of stuck. Um, maybe we could start with uh, my dad, Pacer Gorbster. What's going on, man? Howdy. I'm Thanks Mr. Gorbster. That's right. Um, Go dad. Uh, uh, Nicole is is Chloe's mom. You could probably guess because she was in the camera part of the oh, time. Joe, I wanted to say one thing. Go for it, man. I'm Sir Gorbster on uh, chess.com if you don't play chess. <laughs> Sounds good. Actually, you know what? We got Hassan over here giving a thumbs up. He's big into that too. Okay. Um, I see Tucker. Tucker's the one who just disappeared. Now he's back. That's Tucker. Hey, Tucker, thanks for popping in. Actually, uh, Tucker, um, hey, Tucker, do you want to mention something? You were using ChatGPT to help you with your eBay business. You want to talk a little bit about that as, as part of your intro? That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, I've been using uh, ChatGPT as actually a better Google because I think it's a lot easier than Google because Google, you have to like research it it's a little bit harder, but like ChatGPT is a lot easier because it gives you more options than Google. So I've been using that pretty often for, for stuff I don't know a lot about. That's so great, man. Um, so like oh, I've been learning about like fishing reels and all that stuff so, sweet yeah. um uh dr curious soul lulu is my wife hey honey how's it going oh oh yeah maybe uh i'm good and, yeah hey, hey isla do you want to turn off you guys should yeah. switch you guys switch your audio they're in the same room because our house burned down now we're all stuck in an apartment building with only two rooms so it's, uh, she looks like she's at the beach. Yeah. She's, at the beach. I'm, <laughs> she's gotta I'm get away. Zoom in Isla's mom. Uh, recently, I used the chat GPT to uh, write a book about my childhood. So, uh, I, and I also used the dolly to create pictures for the book. And uh, I published this project on the Weekly app and shared on the demo day room. Share, share a bit, share the video about. It. Here, Sume is quick on the draw here. Oh. Yeah, just show the audio. You don't have to. Hello? Um, so I used this, um, chat GPT to help me uh, improve my writing. And also I used uh, Dolly to generate these pictures for a short book on my childhood. Uh, and uh, uh, it, it's also in both English and Chinese. So I use the Google Translator for some of the translation. Oh, wow, yeah. So, so my wife did this over Christmas break um, before, well, we, had, we knew about ChatGPT, but but she was the one who was really excited about it. And uh, in, in, in a week, she, she made like this 10, what a 12 pager book. And she'd never really been able to do that kind of thing before. 
Um, I, I didn't have pictures from my childhood. Um, so with the help of Dolly, I was able to generate pictures to go with the story. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll keep going around here. Uh, Jean, thanks for coming, Jean. Hey, second well, time for... getting to see you. My pleasure. How are you? Yeah, great. How are you? Good. Like... I'm so glad you could make it. What'd you think? I thought it was great. Um, it was really interesting uh, seeing what could come out of chat GPT. We've been playing around with it a little bit over here. And um, and my daughter, she you might have seen her like pop in in the picture for a second. We're hanging around in front of the TV like we can see you on the big screen, but you can. Hey, what have you been doing Daddy? with a chat GPT young lady? Um, I use it um, a lot. I I enjoy writing um, like novels and stuff in my free time. So I like to use it a lot to create like, let's just say I want to write just like a really quick flash fiction. I can use it to generate um, prompts and names and stuff. And it's very helpful. And also now I know that I can use it to revise my work to make it more interesting, which is really cool. Yeah. So what that. was your name again? Riley. Riley, a uh, round of applause for Riley for presenting on Demo Day. That was great. <laughs> Good job, cool. Riley. You didn't even know. <laughs> what do you call that? Flash what? It was flash story, right? Fiction. Flash, flash fiction. fiction. Wow, that's a cool term. It's just I'm like a couple of paragraphs that you can use to tell a story. That's really neat. Flash fiction. Do you use that when you're like, maybe like playing some like role playing game, like D&D? &D? Like set the scene. I don't play D. &D. Hey, Con, you still haven't taught me how to play D and D. Oh, <laughs> you gotta learn that yet. So, I had a date with my wife where ChatGPT was the dungeon master, and we did some flash fiction. I don't know if you've heard that term, but uh, I was using it to quickly create scenes of of our adventure, and it oh, was that's... so cool. Yeah, um, one of my um, MMA teachers, she uses it to generate. Um, dnd stuff awesome awesome um so we we actually have a couple a few other people i'm still trying to introduce uh we have mboya michael um mboya please do tell us tell tell us a little bit about you man oh uh, hey everyone i'm boya michael i'm a developer based in nairobi kenya uh and the east of africa i'm also the sierra trickle and I helped Sume develop the Wiko app. I actually work under her. Pleasure to meet everyone. He's, man, you're incredible. Uh, ever since I've met him, Boya, he's just been absolutely incredible in helping Sume out with all this stuff. And so just very grateful that he could come and share today. And we also have David is our latest hire joining Sume's team. David, you want to say hi? Can you see me? Yes, we can. Dude, um, you're looking evening. so slick, man. So slick. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. It's nice to be part of the team. It's nice to meet everyone. I love what Wakeful is doing. And I personally use Chas GPT to help me debug some issues with Flutter. So there may be certain issues I have that I don't want to go through the whole stack overflow rabbit hole, finding who had the answer in 2008 or something. So ChatGPT really makes it quite easy for them. That's great. And so yesterday, actually, uh, I met um, David and that was, he, he was giving a lecture, essentially teaching from his projects, which are Flutter apps. And the idea was, well, who should we hire? How do we do this process? And so I was talking with Mboya and Sumi's team about like, okay, what are we gonna, what are we gonna do? And we're like, well, let's just do it like demo day. Cause we think that that model works for school and having kids present what they do to the world as a way of demonstrating competence more clearly than grades and homework. And uh, we thought, well, that's exactly what we wanna do with this. If he can just teach us how he builds apps then we'll know if he's, if he's any good. And it was great. So we hired him. It was like, all right. So that was so this is the idea, man. It's supposed to be like, yeah. So congratulations, David. Good. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, but yeah, the, we were it was supposed to look like this, you know, this kind of idea. Um, so I think we have one more, Hassan. Hassan has been going to our debate club now for several months. Um, he's published a bunch of different arguments of various things. Um, so Hassan, would you like to introduce yourself and say a word or two? Have you been using chat GPT? Hi. Not really, although I asked a few questions to it. What'd you ask? I asked, what, I asked what happens when a neutron star collides with a black hole, aka explosions. Sorry, say that one more time slowly. I asked what happens when a neutron star collides with a black hole. What happens? Uh, basic, well, if the black hole is big enough, it just swallows the neutron star, but if not, I don't remember, but I think, like, they orbit each other until the neutron star and black hole have an epic fight and the neutron star dies, because it's not strong enough. <laughs> well, thank you for teaching us here on Demo Day, Hassan. This be your first. First time Hassan is presented on Demo Day. It was great. Um... All right, well now let's uh, get into this and hear thoughts on these projects. So we don't have grades at Weekly School. Um, what we try to do is create an environment like this one, although we haven't done these larger group ones with my daughter since the fire like six months ago. So it's been a long time coming, but we're glad to be back. Um, but please do, uh, you know, share some, we call them feedback sandwiches. Maybe Isla, do you wanna share a little bit about feedback sandwiches? Or, or Chloe, Chloe, you tell us about feedback sandwiches because otherwise mom and Isla's sound is going to start exploding. All right, go ahead, Chloe. Okay, so feedback sandwiches is basically um, where you can give, it, it's a really good system for giving feedback on people's projects. So there's here is the bread and the meat and then more bread. So the bread is basically positive feedback. So you want to say something positive about how the person's project. The meat is where you, I won't call it negative feedback, but it's more like improvement feedback. You make some suggestions for, for how the, how they could improve their project and then you finish with another bread which is more positive feedback that was so perfect that's, that's basically how how you suggest how to improve a person's project but don't make it sound like you're her being mean or being so overly nice that it just looks like comments on social media where everybody's like, yay, and thumbs up, and good job. And it's like, you know, get some substance in there too. So who would like to come in here and share some thoughts on any of the projects? Go ahead, Hassan. Sume? I, th I thought that like the way how you made the text move was pretty good. Like, how do you make the text move? Well, I use Canva, so you can add transitions and animations in Canva really easily. So oh, okay. I basically use Canva for everything. It's really great. <laughs> okay. Canva, YouTube, ChatGPT, Khan Academy, Google Docs. Not Google as much, but all right, cool. Anybody else? What about you, Jean? I really want to hear thoughts from you. I've I been so too. excited to have you come. Ever since I like saw you typing and sharing some of the things that your kids do, I was like, man, oh, I need to get Jean over here on a demo day and hear her thoughts on this. <laughs> Please. Um, I liked, and, and well, you'll have to tell me some things too, because um. I don't know how you established the theme and this may be somewhere I'm, I haven't researched yet, but I liked how everything was theme-based and every 
but he seemed to take a different approach to that theme. So um, I learned from Sume uh, more about analytics tools. So Google Analytics is sort of that big one out there. And now I have insight into other tools I can use for analytics purposes. So that was really neat. Um, and we did not know, as Riley mentioned um, in Isla's presentation, about dropping a paragraph in and watching it rewrite it. And I thought, oh my gosh, no one actually has to know how to write anymore. So I thought that was kind of interesting. <laughs> I'm going to be the next great author. <laughs> Riley, Riley's raising her hand behind me. So I got to go. Tell her to come around here and take off the blurred background. Come yeah, join We're going to have to rework our, our setup join. here. I have this yeah. chair that I sit in and, and so go, Talk go ahead, Riley. Um, with Chloe's presentation about Thomas Jefferson, I found oh, it cool. um, very interesting on how you can ask the chat GPT to um, pretend to be a person. It's, um, it's kind of funny that now you, instead of relying on textbooks and stuff, you just ask an AI robot. All right, now, Riley. Yeah, you can basically just now ask it any historical question, and you get an answer. Bring it's some like meat to the table, history. Riley. What are some What are some concerns that that you might have with this, Riley? Um, a concern. Oh, mm -hmm. um, I feel like um, there is a lot of history that we don't quite know, so it might not be the most reliable source to ask history. Um, but it's still kind of cool but that's like oh know. yeah no it, it is cool but any other any any um anybody else see concerns with asking dead people uh <laughs> to for chat gpt to impersonate dead people for an interview you know <laughs> why might public schools maybe have a point in terms of having concerns i don't want to i don't want to miss you that you know there oh sorry um go ahead i think that there might be like some well one thing is maybe with not as well hmm well like she like riley said there's a lot of stuff out there uh there's a lot of stuff that we don't that maybe chat doesn't have the information and so when you're reading it just straight off textbook um then it's more reliable than just having um chat gpt because you don't really know what kind of information chat gpt is getting um and so yeah do we know where the textbook descriptions of history are coming from not necessarily but it is easier to fact check than chat gpt because mm. it generally fact will have, checking yeah because ChatGPT, I, I mean with microsoft bing it has the sources right there so that can be a lot more easy to like actually see where it's getting the information but not with ChatGPT specifically and another concern is also the different kind of like maybe um ethical and moral opinions of that time where it's like there might be certain issues if you like ask Thomas Jefferson or somebody who kind of lived in an era where they don't have access to the information that we have now, where they were just, just think about uh, oh. thinking about if you if you think about your life, you the person that is you now, your consciousness now, is not the same as it was a year ago before you had the fire, right? So when you look at a historical picture, like an historical figure any kind if you asked the the ai to be that person what person are they and then in thomas jefferson we have a lot of letters that he wrote have a lot of letters that were written to him we have all of his published stuff we have a, some of his uh debates but and he's a different person at different moments so it's complicated to me i think yeah. Well, we had an ACDC supporter over here that had a comment, but then he he left. Feel free to come back, young man. 
You want to introduce yourself? Uh, he, he's coming back. He's coming back. He's bringing someone else with him, though. There we go. Oh, wow. Well, hello there. Please introduce and your friend. Uh, I am Colin, but this is Holly, and she is. <laughs> she was sleeping until a second ago. She woke up, so. <laughs> anyway, this is Colin. He actually. Anyway, hello. And Hello. do you have any, any thoughts on the chat GPT, Colin? Come on, historian. What do you think about uh, what my dad yeah. just said? He was just talking about how even within an individual, they're not the same person over time. Mm -hmm. And that seems like a rather important distinction because Chloe didn't say interview Thomas Jefferson when he was 50 or when he was... 30. Those might be very different versions of him and his published works are probably going to, my guess is that it's going to wait based on his published works, right? Such that um, he was writing mm. a lot more later in life because he became more famous and more well-known. And so lots of people were writing about him later. But what do you think about that in terms of the, uh, any reactions to that? Or did you have another comment? If you have another comment, that's fine too. Uh, not really. I, I feel like, um, people, I, th I think it's definitely true that he changed when he got older because, I mean, for one thing, when he was, he wasn't president forever, and he probably changed a lot when he became president because, I mean, that's, it's a, probably just the stress alone of having to run a country would change him and how he felt about a lot of things and being in charge of this whole place would probably change your views on a lot of things because i think if he was if he i think it's, it's definitely a different view when you're when you're just living somewhere than if you're actually running the whole place yeah so i think right. You're, right your name was colin yeah. Round of applause for Colin. Carrying on Dylan just for a second. Um, yeah, no, that's that's spot on. I uh well what do you hey Colin, what do you use Chat GPT for? Have you used it for anything? Uh no, I haven't used it yet. <laughs> oh man, I'm so excited for you. <laughs> it's uh it's been one of my latest joys in life is introducing it to people during parties. I'll be asking them questions about like things that they're dealing with questions that they have. And I'll be pulling up a browser and they don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just typing what they're saying and then have it spit it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thank you for sharing. Feel free to stick around and, and hear thoughts or, or share other thoughts. Um, I uh, haven't heard anything from, go ahead, sorry. Oh, okay. Um, so I really like Chloe's article because of course it's not rely it's not very very reliable the chat GPT um and you're not and you're mostly getting information from when a bunch of people were writing about him and when he became well when he was more well known um you're kind of getting like the average version of him, sort of, Thomas Jefferson. But we, but you're definitely much, much, much closer to interviewing Thomas Jefferson than we were, than we was before Chat GPT and before all of that. We can actually have a close, a closer experience to talking to him, which is a huge step from when we were before. So um, I might share just a few thoughts that, and that's great, Isla. I, I completely agree with you. I mean, it's, uh, we, we, we've been talking about this like every day over here. Um, one of the, um, one of the things that I've been learning from, from using this for research like this is that there are a lot of different types of prompts that you can use to help facilitate this. So you might take what Chloe did as one of a multi-pronged approach. Another one would be to ask ChatGPT to identify 10 different resources to use to research Thomas Jefferson. And that's something that you can cross-check against Google 
right away. Because you can you can ask Google for reference like books on Thomas Jefferson and then see like are you seeing some of the same resources that are being established. Then you can also ask ChatGPT to summarize key points of those different uh, articles. And if it's in the same thread, you can even ask it to look for discrepancies between different sources and with regards to Thomas Jefferson's views which is really, that's where you're getting at the heart of where there might be controversies or, or differences of opinion. Um, and so, so you know, there, there's really, we're just now really learning how to prompt engineer. That's called prompt engineering. Uh, the idea of like, what do, you, what do you share with this tool to find out, um, uh, you know, how it influences what you're gonna get back. Um, so I'd encourage everybody to, to practice using different kinds of prompts. It's very hard to learn how to do anything without actually doing it, right? So this would be uh, my suggestion. Um, who have we not heard from here? Nicole, what do you think, Nicole? Any thoughts? Hey, everyone. It's um, so nice to see new faces. Um, what I really like and what I'm interested in, we've talked about this uh, a little bit in other sessions, is how to use uh, citations, right, for ChatGPT. And um, so I really liked how Sume like actually defined the prompt, right? What was the prompt? Um, and then the output. And it's a separate process to analyze, condense, you know, the output and decide what to do with it. But I, I you know, as I think about chat GPT going forward, it, there is the piece of what it produces, but I think it would be really important to know how did you ask the question? What restrictions or limitations did you put in the prompt? Or was it totally open-ended? I think that type of stuff will matter more in the future. I completely agree with you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I actually did a, a, a tweet thread testing this out. I think I may have shared this with you. I, I put it up on Reddit too, um, in addition to Weekly App, where I started out asking it like how to live a happy life. And then I said, I want you to play Socratic method with me where I'm gonna ask you a question. You're gonna respond to that question and then you're gonna revise your answer to how to live a happy life based on the latest question in the discussion. And from this, uh, and I did this a couple different ways just to test it, I was discovering how easy it is to lead ChatGBT just like you would a yeah. witness. So I, remember that, do you wanna talk about that? That sure. was, that was that's like towards the end, I was talking about like yeah. how video games can be, Yeah, something. I can't you, remember exactly. At the end you asked it, um, can, do, do video games bring happiness? And then it was like, oh, yes, video games can bring happiness and yada, yada, yada. And then it revised the paragraph to, like, include all of these things. And then in, like, in literally the response to how to live a happy life, it has a whole sentence on, and video games can be a great way to get, you know, happiness or something. Like, half the final answer was about how video games can bring happiness. Yeah. Because that was the last prompt. Um, <laughs> and so it was like, oh no. Um, same thing with D and D. I could basically get the dungeon master to, to change the next step by like, oh no, I hope we don't find goblins while we're walking down the trail. <laughs> and lo and behold, goblins <laughs> pop out of the bushes. Um, so yeah, that's been interesting. Um any other thoughts here on this we're we got we're gonna actually try to stick to one hour even though when we were doing this in smaller groups sometimes this would just go on and on and on but um any I, last comments from anybody one comment one comment i have we're really looking forward to our house start your computer volume all right you know one Sorry about that. One comment is, uh, you know, with all these models, it's, we say it's a garbage in, garbage out. So it's the quality of uh, the help you get from ChatGPT depends on what data it gets. 
so that's uh, so that's keep in mind. So some of the um, and, and another comment I want to make is that I appreciate uh, Abhinav teaching us about India today. Yeah, he had to drop off. He sent me a little note. It was so kind. He was just like, oh, oh, he was still listening. He was still sharing something. He was like, hey, I have to go, Joe. I'm getting really, really tired, but thank you for letting me <laughs> So we need to find another time for Abhinav. Maybe we'll do like a Saturday morning or something for him. But um, wow. OK, well, we're going to be here every Friday at 3 Eastern time. Um, uh, if if there are other um, other kids that want to share a project, main thing would be that uh, it's got to be something that they're actually like excited about, um, and that they have something that's written and prepared, and then that way um, folks can have a chance to read it, and it also just really helps them structure their thinking, uh, so that when they do come up and present, like like we're re we're recording this so. We, we, we've actually done a lot of recording of these before in the past, but when you watch all these older, older recordings of these demo days, you can tell that the students are prepared. And so when they look back at this that's public, um, they can feel really good about it instead of it being just another instance of a young person regretting having something on the internet. So we're trying to show how to use technology in a helpful, constructive way. Um, so part of that is making sure that uh, anybody that does present is prepared. Um, so that's uh, why we asked to have something that's um, some kind of digital artifact to represent that. So happy to uh, facilitate that. Um, and uh, just very grateful for everybody coming and sharing their thoughts and um, just being part of that feedback process. Because like I said, we don't have grades, we don't have curriculum, we don't have teachers. We're trying to learn the way adults do by creating something useful, and getting really good at communicating, taking feedback, um, iterating and improving oftentimes on these projects, maybe even helping kids make a little money off these projects. Um, so yeah, it's just tremendous having you all here and just um, thank you very much and have a wonderful Friday and have a great weekend, everybody. Round of applause one more time for all the presentations and everybody participating. Have a good day. Bye. 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 Have a good day. Bye. Okay.